words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight o lord my strength and my redeemer your grace is my most beloved and respected thirmenis members of the clergy deacons shemashins my young friends this morning when i was filling up my identity tag i filled up my name but just below that there was a place where i had to fill in which diocese i came from and like my beloved seraphim tirmeni said technically speaking i belong to the bangalore diocese because my membership is still with the st andrews church in bangalore but my parents are from mavelikera i was born and brought up in madras i worked for some years in delhi before i relocated to hyderabad and now i am back in delhi so i am a little confused as to which diocese i should mention there so i will say that i am a malangara orthodox christian and it is with that identity that i wish to share some of my thoughts here with all of us as usual there are some technical problems i come from a media and communication background and i know that when you depend on technology it will always let you down but as we all know there is only one person that we can rely on and that is the person we rely on today i rely on today too one of the things that media and communication teaches you is that you need to be self dependent you need to have a backup plan but sometimes the backup plan may let you down but you need to be self reliant i know that i am standing before my gurus my teachers spiritually i know that many of you know much more than what i can give you in terms of what i am going to speak but nevertheless i am going to ask you to be patient i am going to ask you to indulge my ignorance because when i say what i am going to say it is said as somebody who is outside the clergy and so for what it is worth i am placing before you my two pennies worth of thoughts the theme this morning is still there is room and that is the theme for the biennial conference when i saw this theme i was struck by another similar phrase in the bible and the phrase that comes to mind is there is no room in the inn and we all know when that was said from a position of insufficiency where there is no room in the inn we have come to a place in time where we can say still there is room i think this is appropriate for the malangara church because it reflects the kind of attitude that we have to bring that we have to bring to our activities 
When Isaac Achen asked me for a topic, through our discussions, we came to this topic, boundaries, challenges beyond the boundaries. The Malangira Church is a very special church. From AD 52 till 2016, like Thirumeni said, we have had a steady growth. That growth is reflected in the kind of churches that we have, not only in India, but across the globe. We have a global presence and uh, we are proud of it. Our liturgy, our traditions, <coughs> our spirituality are all things that we feel very strongly about. But today, what I want to share with all of us is what are the challenges beyond the boundaries? What are the challenges beyond the boundaries? Before we look at the challenges, I want to focus on what the boundaries are. Boundaries have one quality. Boundaries help us define things, whether they are communities, whether they are housing colonies, whether they are paintings. Boundaries help us limit and therefore define that entity. But boundaries also have the quality of limiting us. They contain us. They restrict us. And uh, with respect to the Malangara Sabha, I would like to offer another perspective about the boundaries. The boundaries which we have kept for ourselves, the traditions that we are so proud of, our liturgy, our liturgy, our spirituality, the character, the Indian character of our church has been limiting us. It has kept us from where we should be today. It is an irony because what we consider our strength is also now becoming a limiting factor. One of the things that limits us is our tradition. And while it is good, while we respect our forefathers who fought, who gave their lives for our traditions, the time has come now to hold on to our traditions and without losing our identity to go beyond. So the first boundary that I think we have is our tradition. Tradition is not a wrong thing. Tradition is very important for us to define ourselves. We get our identity, especially in a secular world, especially in a multipolar world, especially in a world where increasingly religion is seen as having very little or no significance, we need to retain that tradition. And I know, especially since taking over uh, 
taking charge of St. Stephen's College where I am now in some sense a part of the Church of North India, I know how valuable, how rich, how spiritual our traditions are. In Malayalam we say, Muttete Mullekim Manamilla. This is exactly the situation I am in now. As a member, participating member of a CNI institution, I know how special our traditions are. But I know that as a church, as a member of the Orthodox Church, I know that my church can take a leadership position. I know that the many young Chemachins who have joined, with whom I have interacted on several occasions, I know that they are driven by a sense of commitment. And that commitment does not come from within. It comes from above. So my question today is, when we have such a strong tradition, when we have such a rich tradition, why are we not leading? Why are we holding back? In our church, both within the clergy and among the laity, we have people who have proved themselves. We have Thirumenis, we had Thirumenis, we still have Thirumenis, who have made a mark for themselves internationally. In the fields of theology, in the fields of religion, we have ordinary men and women who have made a difference to the societies that they live in. But why is it that still the Malangara Orthodox Church has not taken a leadership position? That is my question. And one of the boundaries, one of the many boundaries is our tradition. We want to stay within our tradition. And that brings me to my second point, the second boundary. We are very insular, we have become insular. We think we are good, we have everything, but we don't have anything. We don't have everything. We have many things. If you look at our churches, if you look at the schools and high schools and colleges and medical colleges and engineering colleges and Balabhavans and Vigalanga Balabhavans and Balika Bhavans, we are really rich. But that is not everything. In our institutions, we may be doing well. But we need to grow. To need to grow, we need to see beyond the boundaries. So the first boundary I said is our tradition to which we cling on, to which we hold on so tightly and don't want to look beyond that. The second boundary that I see is that of being self-contained. We think that we have everything. We certainly have many things, but not everything. Why do I say this? I say this because I want to take us back to Jesus' parable of the talents. When talents are given, it is not given to be hid in the ground, as we all know. It is to be developed, it is to be shared, it is to be multiplied as a church. Have we done that? 
we have built up our institutions but where have we taken that leadership beyond our institutions we have been blessed and blessed for a reason we have to take up the challenges of leadership and it has to be outside the balangara sabha we have to open up our perspectives and look around so very quickly let me go over what i think are limiting us from taking up these leadership positions too strong an identity our identity is within the orthodox church which is very good but we need to ask ourselves are we restricting ourselves are we complacently happy and satisfied being orthodox christians orthodoxy is the true way isn't it our responsibility to share that with others too much of a sense of tradition and red tape bureaucracy we have a certain order we have a certain hierarchy all of which must be respected i am not saying break the hierarchy i am not saying do away with the rules but i am saying is this what christ would have done had he been in our position i remember a quotation from christ which says that man was not made for the sabbath but the sabbath was made for man i mean what does this tell us this tells us i think that humanity is important our brothers and sisters from other churches are important our communities in other religions are important we are blessed to know the true way how are we sharing that very often people complain especially those outside the clergy complain when a kalpana is read oh this is another request for money but i want to ask our church is this the position that we are in are we in a situation where there is too much of money is our focus largely on money amassing money money is only a by product what are we doing with that money that is a question i will leave with all of us increasingly we have to consider the secular factor in our day to day life and administration whether as a church whether as the principal whether as ordinary people we have to be secular what is this secularity is this secularity a sacrificing of our identity a sacrificing of our true belief so that we will appease politically correct situations politically correct 
people occasions as a church do we have the christian moral courage to stand up and proudly declare what we believe that is another question sometimes our strengths are our weaknesses is this the situation in which the malangara orthodox church is is our tradition is our insularity is our dependence on what is within becoming our weakness we are orthodox we are rooted in our traditions we follow the true way we are the original saint thomas christians all of these are so well known to us we hear it every time we are this we are that we've got this fantastic institution we have done all this yes but you have done it for your community what have you done for the others i am asking myself as much as i am asking each and every one of us gathered here recently we had the sunday school examinations and the topic for the essay was the malangara orthodox church in 2020 senior children of the sunday school were asked to write an essay on what they wanted the malangara orthodox church to be in 2020 and the first prize winner from delhi hoskas church was a young girl her name is alina sara samuel she got the first prize and what i have on the screen here is what she wanted the church to be there are six points that she wants our church to be characterized by number 1 she says that our church should guide the flock especially the youth i don't need to say it it is evident our children are going away from us they are going away because there are other things which are more attractive they are going away because they are unable to understand what is happening in our church they are going away because they are fed up with the fights and troubles that happen in the governing uh, general body alina says that she is looking at a church in 2020 which will be able to lead point number 2 she wants a church which will transform lives even as i am speaking today now there is one person in madras who is desperate who is on the verge of suicide a member of our church but because of a unhappy past he has gone through two divorces and his family situation is terrible 
I met with him a little while ago, some time ago. And one of the things he told me was, I love to go to one of our churches and be a part there. It is a desperate cry from one member who is sinking. My question is, this is one member I know. There are several. There are several who are going through addictions. There are several who are going through family situations. There are, fem f there are many who are going through old age and loneliness. There are many who are going through ill health and poverty. Alina says, and this is a young child. This is the future of the Malangara church. This young child says, I want my church to transform the life of this person, of that lonely Amachi who is there bedridden, unable to go to the church, but who is desperately longing to receive the Holy Communion. Is our church capable of going there? Is our church capable of going to the family which is having a marital problem and solving that problem? We expect them to come to us. But I think we should be going to them. Point number three. Retain values but be modern and use technology. I think our church is a very progressive church. We are using technology. Our website is a very, very good website. But it is not just the website that is needed. We have many young men and women who are very good with technology. Use technology to carry out our mission. Number four. Teach the faith, but link it up to contemporary issues, contemporary problems. It's very interesting. This is a young child, 12th standard child, who is saying, not that she does not want the faith, but she is saying, teach the faith, but link it up with the problems that I am facing. Number five. She wants the Malangara Orthodox Church to participate towards one global church. And the last point. She wants the Malangara Church to lead by example. And one of the specific things she has written in her essay, which is the prize winning essay, is that we should start by making peace with the faction with whom we have got cases going. This is a young child a 12th standard child who is talking. But Shai, what we need to, to know is behind these wishes, these six wishes, she is saying that these things are perhaps not there now in our Sabha. We don't ask for something that we have, do we? We ask only for something that we do not possess. If this child, if the future of the Malangara Orthodox Church is very clearly saying this, why is she saying that? Isn't it because something is missing? We have given her the first prize. But giving her the first prize is not enough. She is telling us 
something very very important and if we want to break boundaries we need to look to people like elena we need to see what are these children saying which is not said i want to come back i want to be very clear about one thing we are a very rich church rich in terms of spirituality rich in terms of spiritual gifts but these gifts need to be shared at three levels within our own community remember the example i gave you of that suicidal person why should he come to another ordinary member and say i wish i can go to church why is it that our church has not identified this person who is drowning that is a wake up call for us we need to work at a social level we should not be happy with setting up our balagrams our balika grams we need to open up and communicate with other denominations within our christian faith we are doing some things definitely but can a leader do just something and go away we cannot we have to take responsibility for leadership the third point we need to work at a global level we have churches everywhere we have an international presence but again there what are we doing does our sabha have a policy which covers global issues issues like the environment issues like the lgbt community issues of women's empowerment issues of having a dialogue with other faiths we are capable of doing all of that we are capable of leading in all of those issues because of our tradition because of our faith because of what we have but we are not doing it why that is our boundary our biggest boundaries are these this is what is limiting us the boundaries are created by us god has not said don't go out and do whatever you have to do god christ has always encouraged us and you know that better than i do there are several examples in the bible where christ has broken tradition and gone beyond i see a young set of achins here i see several senior thirumenis with so much of experience and in that combination of experience a rich spirituality and young achins who are committed young deacons who are keen who have taken up by choice this profession this very 
revered profession in that combination i see the future of the malangara church our boundaries are our challenges we need to break those boundaries thank you very much for listening to me